All right, guys. So this here car is going to be getting a set of Bosch 980s or Bosch 1000s. Is what they are. 980s to 11, whatever they are. I don't know what they actually call them, but we've got a set of Bosch 1000s to go in this thing, which is awesome. Uh, those were supplied by the owner. Uh, the owner also supplied a new Turbo Smart uh, fuel pressure reg, which is great. And we're also fitting a new set of Pro valve springs for this thing. And I haven't opened this box yet. Give me five. So we're also fitting these uh, big boy race valve springs from Crow. Now these are pretty much, from what we can tell, pretty much good for as much boost pressure as you can throw at a street built barrel. Um, we do offer as well a like sort of one level down from this spring, which is pretty good up to, you know, around about that sort of 20 pound ish. Um, as you know, if you're playing at home, 20 pound on a barrel, even on stock cams, that's still a lot of power, but we tend to just for the price difference, we tend to just go for the, the race series springs, you know, the uh, the price difference isn't huge and you end up with a better spring and that's your valve spring upgrade done, you don't have to worry about it again. So then, you know, later on when you can afford it, we can drop some big cams in there, which we also offer for sale on our website. So you can head to the website to check it out if you'd like to buy any of these upgrades. So both of these barrels are getting the same set of springs um, and I'll have to check. We supplied the injectors for the Gold Ute. I'm not exactly sure what they are yet, but we'll get to that when we get there. So the other thing is, this is the car where we're meant to be doing the flapper mod too, because he's got this weird aftermarket high flow GT3582. Uh, however, I just sent him a message because once we got that overboosting issue sorted on the dyno, it was maintaining that 10, 11 pound fine. It's not boost spiking. So I'm not sure that the, uh, you know, the, the flapper mod will actually be necessary uh, to run our sort of 14, 15 PSI that we were running run. So I've just sent him a message, asked him if he'd like us to just go ahead and do it anyway, or whether he'd rather us just see how it goes and make the call. If it needs it, then we can, we can do it later. But anyway. For now, regardless, we're going springs and injectors, a new fuel pressure rig. So let's get it done. All right, so you can see the difference between the standard and the big boy upgraded ones. Oh, all right, guys, there we go. All new upgraded springs, new valve stem seals, and we also put a new set of plugs in as we were going as well. So we've got new plugs. What a job, it's such a prick. Particularly the ones at the back, like at the cow, trying to get them, like the, the locks back in, it, it sucks. Anyway, I'll go through the next one a bit more in depth. I didn't film a lot of this one because I left the camera with Rex to do some time-lapsing stuff, which uh, for some stuff that's upcoming. Um, but hopefully for the next one, which I'll probably wait to do next week, I'll be able to film more in depth about the process of how you go about it. However, it's just one of those things. It's, um, it's a pretty big job I wouldn't recommend to someone who's not really switched on mechanically uh but anyway now to start the process of putting it all back together and uh putting the new injectors in Whee! so this is the tool we use which we also sell on the um on the shop you can buy this as well as your valve uh valve springs if you wish um some they someone makes a tool as well you can actually lock might even just be forward you can actually lock the cams and just take the vct phases and then um you know just pull the cams out and leave the timing cover and everything on you can do it that way uh, but we don't have the tools. We've never done it that way. Um, this is actually the first time we've done it in the car. Uh, we've done it with the engine outside the car before, but this is the first time we've done it with in the car. And yeah, trying to get at the locks at the back, that sucked ass. And we're not looking forward to that for the next one, but it is what it is. Um, but anyway, the rest of them, they're pretty easy. All right, so I've got the cams back on this thing. We've got it timed again. However, I did just remember that uh, I forgot to go and get the new front main seals that I ordered uh, because no one at the parts shop called me to tell me that they were there. Um, so I forgot about them. So I can't put the actual front cover and everything back on because I don't have a new front tire, uh, front main seal. That'll have to wait till tomorrow. But nonetheless, we can uh, continue on going with our injector upgrade and fuel system upgrade. So this is what the customer supplied. It came from Golby's. It's a Turbo Smart FBR 800. And apparently you got this whole setup. It comes for like 300 and something bucks, which is quite good price. So the setup the user told me to get from GFB for the VS um seems to be about the same price so this might be another option for anyone out there who's looking at it so as you can see that there it just drops into the the standard location where the reg is and um there's a little hose that it comes with that loops those two so basically it comes into the reg uh or what would be where the reg used to be comes out into the fpr 800 where it regulates and then it loops it back into the top side of the where the, what the regulator used to be i'm pretty sure this is no regulator now it's just some sort of bypass system at this point and then just sends it straight back down the uh the stock return in the center there uh so that's pretty awesome it literally just drops in 
and you've got yourself a fully adjustable regulator, which is pretty cool. So I've got that set up at an orientation like that, which uh, it looks pretty average, but it's the only way I think I can put it in where it's gonna clear everything and still be accessible. Um, you know, not gonna interfere with the, the uh, cam cover or anything else like that. So pretty sure that's how it's gonna have to be. The only thing I'm gonna have to look at is the intake pipe, because I know it goes around the back there. So that might be a problem. Anyway, got to keep an eye on that. Apart from that, pretty much pull the rails, replace the injectors, back on, self-explanatory. So I'm gonna go ahead and do all this. And that's the fuel system done. And then tomorrow I wanna to get a new front main, put the rest of the motor together, and back onto the dyno we go. All right, guys, so we've got Falcon number one back together with our new valve springs. Um, we did actually have a, an issue with the new regulator setup that he, he got. Um, the regulator is cooked. Like uh, the FBR 800 Turbo Smart regulator is there's design to go between 30 and it's adjustable up to 70 PSI. There must be something up with the diaphragm or something in that regulator because we could not get it under 70 PSI. The thing would just sit at about 75 PSI fuel pressure. We couldn't regulate it at all. So what we actually did was just pull that whole reg setup back out. Um, and the owner is gonna try and get that back to where he bought it from to try and get a refund. We just put the standard four bar reg back in. Uh, I think he was sort of under the impression that he, he really needed an adjustable reg. We sort of let him know that with the four bar reg and those injectors, he's he's fine. So I think he's just gonna, we'll see how that goes on the dyno. And I think he's just gonna be happy to send the FBR 800 back to get a refund because it didn't work at all and um, then just leave it. So uh, that's pretty much the plan with this one. It's getting very similar injectors, um, albeit they're a little bit different because we're supplying these ones, the customer supplied those ones. Uh, but this one, our plan is just to leave the stock four by reg in it. But anyway, uh, I wanted to film this one a bit more in depth because I've actually got the GoPro for this one. Um, Rex is actually gonna be helping out so I can film while we go a bit more. Oh, well, implying that I didn't help on the he other helped, one. He helped on the other one, but he's gonna be more involved with this one. So I can show you a bit more of the process. Unfortunately, um, he's gotten a fair way through it already because I wasn't here, but um, he worked last night and I stayed at home because uh, you know, spent time with the fam. But anyway, basically it goes like this. You pull your intake off, you pull your rock cover off, you pull your uh, balancer off. So what we have is a power bar, which is one of these tools. Um, so what this is, you know, you hook this on and you use a hammer and you'd be surprised at how much force you can actually get into, you know, a bolt with something like that. So uh, it pretty much deletes the requirement for having to move the radiator or anything else out of the way. Once we get the, uh, the, the thermo fans out, there's plenty of room in there to get that power bar in and we can knock it out. Um, then we have this special balancer puller, which is actually designed specifically for um, LSs and Fords. Uh, and it sort of just fits, as you can see, just fits in front of the radiator. Just enough room for us to pull that, um, that balancer off without having to remove the radiator. Once the balancer's off and you remove the idlers and the tensioner, you can pull the front cover off. Uh, it takes, you know, you gotta remove the power steering pump and there's also this bracket on the alternator which has to move as well, because it stops the cover. But anyway, then you can pull the cover off. To get the cover off uh, BA, BF, maybe BF, I don't know. We've never actually done a BF. So I can't confirm, but I'm assuming BF as well. You gotta pull the throttle body off so that you can slide the cover back and get it over the VCT solenoids. Uh, with FGs, you can actually pull the VCT solenoids out without having to pull the cover off. And then you can just pull the cover straight off, which you don't need to pull the throttle body. Even then the throttle body on an FG comes straight up. So it's not in the way either way. So FGs are a little bit nicer in that regard. Um, so yeah, this is all step one. You get all this off and then we'll uh, move on to phase two. I hit my elbow. It wasn't a spanner, I'll just get the 3 8 ratchet and stick it in the end. That's what I normally do. Do you want to fucking do it then? No, nah, not really. Then don't tell me to do my job. <laughs> well, I don't feel like you're listening to your shit, so... <laughs> just take your face somewhere else. I'm fine. Like I keep saying, we've got a lot of barriers lined up this year. We've got these at the moment. Um, I'm planning on doing something with our XR6 Turbo this year, doing the, the VS at the moment. We've got the BMW outside that we're going to be barrier swapping. We've got another H3S Holden we're going to be barrier swapping this year as well. So plenty of barriers happening this year. It's just one of those motors that we have up until sort of fairly recently not had a heap to do with. So, so this poor ute um, before it came here has been, someone's had a go at it, that uh, it's not really up to any sort of standard, what they've done. So we'll fix it up as best we can as we go, but uh, there wasn't much to see before what you're seeing now anyway. It was pretty average. So someone's had this front cover and the, the 
top cover off at some point for something. I'd assume maybe possibly a timing chain. And um, they put it back together. They have just absolutely covered everything with RTV. I mean everything. Look, it's like it's they actually full, filled filled all the holes. It's like they filled the holes. They um they've snapped what was it three or two? Ah, uh, two. Two two of the uh, the actual bolts for the top cover have been snapped. So while we've got the cam caps off, we're gonna try and get them out uh, for the owner. Just try and basically clean up whatever someone's done to it and um, obviously try and put it back together with some sort of pride <laughs> and some sort of standard. Yeah, there's missing bolts in the sump and the timing cover. This is like we're gonna have to clean up all these on the wire wheel because they're just covered in RTV. So I don't know yet till we get the cover, look at that. I don't know yet till we get the cover off whether That's disgusting. Whether those bolts are missing or if they've been, been snapped snapped. off. Yep. So. Rough as guts. Shout out to our boy Brad over at Fish and Drifts as well. Check out this mug he made us. The old 33.4 bacon ties. Hell yeah. Wasn't that one full of silicon? <laughs> what the hell is wrong with people? Jesus. So yeah, those two snap bolts that were in the, the cam cover, they just RTV'd them into the cam cover and they RTV'd every bolt in the cam cover. Um, just, someone's used just like three tubes of silicon just putting this thing back together. It's been done more than once too because there's two different colors Yeah, of there's silicon. blue and then there's gray. <laughs> uh. All right, so with all those gross bolts out, off comes the front timing cover. This is the best part about working on utes. <laughs> but everything in the back. But uh, from here, pretty much we turn it over to top dead. Then we can pull the tensioner off, um, pull the timing chain off, and start pulling the cams out. Goodness. I mean, don't get me wrong, I'm all for RTV and these gasket services to make sure they don't leak, because they're a real pain in the ass, and nine out of 10 barrels leak. Um, but uh, actually like fully filling the RTV in all the bolt holes, it's pretty wild. It's pretty wild. Check this out. Someone actually scratched E onto this VCT solenoid, which you would assume would mean exhaust. Um, and they put it back in on the intake side after all that, which is comical. Not to mention every bolt has been outrageously tight. No, These not, two, a, not all of them. These some, two, are, some are too tight, then others just aren't tight at all. <laughs> I found loose ones. <laughs> These two are like, like just eight mil, probably what are they, M6? M6, yeah. Yeah, M6, eight mil head. Freaking hell, they were tight. Retarded. It's so really dumb. Sideways, bag <laughs> Alrighty, so cams are out. As always, with overhead cam situations like this, you want to make sure that you unload the cams evenly and bring the cam up evenly and flat. The issue you have with cams is cams are very, they cast, so they're very brittle. So if you allow them to come up unevenly, the loaded, you know, the springs or the lobes that are loaded up, if they come up unevenly, um, they do have a tendency to crack. You can very well easily damage cams doing it um, that way. So same with tying, tightening them down. Make sure you do it evenly. Make sure you tighten them cams down nice and evenly um, and flat. So that's the biggest thing there. So anyway, now the fun starts. So. From top dead center, we do number one and six because that's in line six, that's how they're orientated, uh, which is good. It gives you a good hit at number one, which gives you a bit of a feel for what you're doing. And then you get to get the worst one out of the way, which is number six, it sucks ass, it's the worst. Uh, one thing, the cam angle sensor on the exhaust side, get that out of the way, we'll um, pull that out because that does get in the way, on or off the motor, it just gets in the way. So when you're doing this, you only want to remove the plug on the cylinder that you're working on. Uh, you want to make sure you leave the other plugs in because you need, uh, you actually need that compression in those cylinders. Otherwise, when you pressurize the cylinder, if all the other cylinders, there's, there's no plug and there's no way for them to make compression, you just turn the motor over and you push the, uh, the cylinder back down, uh, the piston, sorry, push the piston back down to bottom dead center. Mm. So obviously it's a good opportunity to do your timing chain if you need to do it or if your budget allows or put dropping cams in which we do also sell along with our springs. Um, anyway, this is the tool which we use which we will get ready now. Um, as you can see, it's fun doing these little locks. It's like doing brain surgery, particularly the ones at the back where you can't see. You got to use a mirror and 
do them sort of by feel and it, it's it's quite a challenge i'll give you that I'll, I'll tell you that it's it's challenging so the other thing we do is plug up all of the oil drains in the head last thing you want to do is to potentially drop a lock and have it find its way down into the sump because then it's very 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 difficult to get out that would be the suck yeah it would be the suck um some vehicles with flat sumps, you can sort of get a magnet and drag it to the to the sump plug, but barra sumps. Cute little rag. <laughs> but barra sumps, it's yeah, it's not it's not that easy. Um, I would hate to know how hard it would be to try and get a lock out of a barra sump. I don't reckon you would be able to. But either way, so barras, uh, all the drains are on the uh, the intake side here. We've got drains between each cylinder, so we plug all them up with rags. Um, and yeah, so we'll start with number one, pull it out, get our cylinder pressure duva. Um, we pump about 60 psi into these, um, much more than that, and you start brisking it turning over even with all the other plugs in. But it's definitely enough pressure to hold uh, the valves up and keep things up. Remove all our rockers from cylinder one, which you have to sort of like pick up and turn 90 degrees so they don't fail on the cam cap and they pull out. Yibbity doo dah. Put them down. We keep them orientated where they came from so they can go back exactly where they came out. And uh, yeah, it's, um, it's pretty, I suppose, simple. It's not that complicated. It's just challenging and monotonous. I don't want to use this drag. I reckon that'll suit me. You reckon it'll look good on you? I think it, yeah, and it's stretchy. It's a little it's stretchy. stretchy. All right, let's keep it aside. Oh, that's nice. <laughs> I like it. I like it, a nice <gasps> skirt. No, I don't like it anymore. It's an extra large. <laughs> right, oh, first things first, plug comes out. That was confusing. Rex already undid it. Yeah, it was only just sitting in there. All right. Plug out. Then we get our U bloody butte valve spring tool. All right. So, valve spring tool, it goes on, it bolts down to the cam cap bolts. So it sits there like so. Now, the factory torque spec for cam cap bolts is 10 Newton meters, so you really don't want to be doing these too tight and they just nip them up. On these bolts that actually uh, compress the springs, we use plenty of anti-seize. Anti-seize them sort of every job. All right, so with them nipped up, it's time to get our little air compressor doobie. All right, so then you go in goes the hose for the air compressor, which screws into the plug hole. Probably do better if it wasn't curled up in a box all its life. All right. So, now we've got that plugged in. We connect our air. All right, so another thing which pays to do, obviously these locks um, and retainers have been stuck together for quite some time. So usually they're very stuck. So you, if you don't free them up, usually it'll just push the valve down with the lock. So just get a, a mallet and something to just give them a tap. It just, it just frees up the uh, retainer from the locks. which just makes it a little bit easier. All right, so now the second part of the tool are these little Lego helmet looking things. And they actually just perfectly sit on the retainer. They usually actually bring the retainers back with them when you pull them off. So from there, Tighten down. It pushes the retainer down to free up the lock. Like so. If you suddenly hear it start hissing air out of the exhaust or the intake, you've gone too far, which does happen sometimes. So from there you get a little magnet like Rex has just done and you pull out the locks. Magnate. Get a magnet in there, pull them locks out. That's how you get your locks out. Wait. Out they cut. Now with all the locks out, you then put the pressure off these bolts, let the springs come up. Then you pull out your little Lego helmets and usually they will bring the retainer with them. Normally, because of the oil, the retainer just sticks in the Lego helmet. So with all of them removed, get our 10 mil, and we remove the tool again. You don't remove the air. Leave the air hooked up at this point. You 
pull out the M6 bolts, which hold the tool down. Oop. Rex grabs the tool. And then you just move it out the way up the airline. And then from here, you can pull out all the sprangs and put them in the bin box. Boom! Then you pull off the old valve stem seal. As my assistant, he will demonstrate. That's why I really need that skirt. Yeah. <laughs> You're gonna call me an assistant. <laughs> no, it's only a joke. All right, from there we get our brand spanking new stem seals and they go on and you just want to be careful just getting them over the valve. Just wriggle them nice and gently. Tap, tap it down, get it down there. You don't want to go gung-ho just pushing down on the valve because you'll end up pushing it off the seat and into the cylinder. Which, you know, is not what you want in this situation. Good replacing them, those old valve stem seals was fairly hard. Yeah, well this thing was blowing a bit of smoke on, on the dyno. This one here. But it's just a good opportunity to do them anyway. Then we get our seal driver. On the seals go with the seal driver. Very cool and good. All right, new big boy sprangs go on. Big boy. Then the tool goes back over the cam caps. Oh, bolted back down. It is freaking hot today. Also, there's goddamn skylights in the shed. Almond. Rumbly rumbles. Rumble grumble. All right, so with the tool back on, we get our little Lego helmets again. Of our big boy, big horsepower crow springs. Big boy. Which you can buy on our website. I don't know if I've told you before in the other seven times I've told you in this video. All right, and then we compress our new sprangles. And now these tools are pretty good, but you just want to make sure that the, uh, the retainer doesn't get catch on the end of the valve and push it down. But um, we found this tool to be quite good as far as that goes. We've got, um, we've got tools for doing LS valve springs a somewhat similar way. Um, and that tool is a real pain. If you don't watch it, it'll just push the, um, push the retainer down straight onto the top of the valve and push it through. But as you can see, the little Lego helmets have a little locator in the top of them, which seems to work pretty well with these bolts. And so far, we've never had an issue. All right, so now with the springs compressed comes the fun part. We gotta get the locks back in. As you can see, our little Lego helmets don't have much of a window, so it is a bit challenging, but after a little while, you get your technique down pat. It's usually right towards the end of your first one. Um, you've got a technique down pat, so you usually get the last four, all right. Hmm. RTO. RTO. Yep. So. Once you get your locks in place. Back up she comes. And your little Lego helmet comes off. Uh, got one, one spring installed. One done. 23 to go. Yay! So we'll finish these four and um, then we move to number six because it's also up at top dead center because one is. Uh, it's not obviously imperative that you have the cylinder you're working on at top dead center. The, the system, the setup, the way we're doing it still works either way. Uh, the only thing is if you do happen to, to do something wrong and you do drop a valve, if your piston's up at top dead center, the chances are you may be able to recover the valve and pull it back up. Uh, whereas if you've got a piston that's all the way down the bottom of the bore and you accidentally happen to drop a valve or something, um, good luck with that, <laughs> is all I can say. Another one done. Bit of Blaine surgery. I think that one's got to go down a bit as well. A bit more. So it's really a matter of just practice. You sort of, after a few of them, you start to figure out how, how low you really need to have the retainer for the locks to actually go in properly and, and stuff like that. You start to get a feel for it. Yeah, that's it.
All right, so that's cylinder one done. So now you can disconnect your air. Just leave the hose in the hole. Disconnect your air. Yeah, like Rex is saying, leave the hose in the hole. I have a habit of always leaving something in the plug hole just because there's nothing worse than dropping something than it finding its way down a freaking plug hole. It's the worst. So off comes the tool. Set him aside. And that's pretty much it. Now you can pull the hose out. Put a new plug in. And put our lifters back in. Lift us back. So that's one cylinder done. So that's the easy one. Now we move straight to the hardest one, which as you can imagine, trying to get those locks in, in the back of the back cylinder, where you're against a firewall and you can't see and you can't really get anything in there. It sucks. All right, so we're about to start the seriously fun bit. This is where you got to get serious about fun. So as you can see guys, it's not the end of the world if you do accidentally go open a valve. Oh. Doesn't mean that, that was totally meant to happen. I did that to prove a point. Um, so yeah, you can go to, it's not the end of the world. They do just come back up, provided you keep them pressurized. So anyway, here's where the fun bit starts. Oh, I'm about to fucking drop it out anyway. Back. Well over an hour later, we've got the back cylinder done, number six. So it's just car, oh, there's, there's nothing you can really do. You just gotta keep at it. It's very, very fiddly and tiny, and that's like I said, how I'd imagine brain surgery would be. <laughs> Not really, but it's it's seriously painful and annoying. But anyway, all you can do is persevere and get it done. So now that that's done, we just go on and do the other four cylinders. So that's eight down, sixteen to go. Anyway, um, I'm not even gonna time lapse the rest of them because it'll make this video super way too long because it's already probably way too long. So I'm gonna get through, get these done, and then we'll trim back in when we're starting to put it back together. Putting in new plugs every cylinder as we go. These are sevens. We've got them down though, they're not 1.1. That's too big of a gap. We've got them down to 0.8, which should be fine for the amount of power and boost we wanna be running in this thing. Um, so yeah, we'll replace them every cylinder as we go as well. So now we turn it over until twos are top dead, and then we do two and four. And then we turn it around until, uh, sorry, two and five. My bad. And then we turn around till three is the top dead and then we do three and four. And then it's done. All right guys, so there you have it. All new valve springs, all new valve stem seals, all new plugs ready to go. So now we'll work on cleaning up all this RTV from the last people that had a go at this to make sure it goes back together, you know, somewhat respectable. Uh, like the, this top cover is a rubber seal anyway. You really, you don't need RTV. It's, it's crazy how much RTV they put in this. But anyway, you get that on the big jobs. But either way, um, so pretty much with these things, we've got it down to the point where it takes us just as long to do that back cylinder number six as it takes us to do the rest of the, the other five. So it's about two and a half hours for us to do all the valve springs once we've got it to the point. And at least half of that time is usually in, in number six. So that's sort of thing. Anyway, Rex uh, at the moment is just working on trying to get all of these snap bolts out of the cam caps while we've got them out. So he's working with the easy out, which is always heaps of fun. Um, this one is obviously working. The other one's not going to happen. The other one's not going to happen. Someone's already had a crack at it. Oh, okay. And they've just butchered it. I, yeah, right. I had a bit of a go. It's just not going to happen. Yeah. But oh. that one at least came out. So we've so got one. one. So we're still going to have one snap bolt, which um, unfortunately is unavoidable for us now. But it's getting late anyway. So that's good. Now it's uh, almost time to start work on putting it back together tomorrow. So. It'll be that one there, which is a middle one, so not not a huge deal. Not the worst thing. Yeah, yep. yeah, yeah. Well, it'll be okay. Now, well, still better than having two snap ones. So, yeah. So anyway, yeah. we'll work on cleaning up all the gasket surfaces in the morning. We'll film it anyway. And uh, the only other thing we do at this point is um, new front main, new front main seal all the ways when we do this. Uh, and yeah, like I said, if it's a good time to do timing 
set if the budget allows and if you require it. But all right, so we've got cams back in that same thing, making sure to tie them down evenly. Um, the sequence is to start on the outside and work your way in on the front, and then do the same on the back. That's the sequence that uh, is in the manual. But uh, just making sure they come down nice and evenly. The torque specs for these are 10 newton meters, and then we move on to timing. So the timing chain has four colored links. Two orange links, or yellowish orange, that uh, line up with the top of your cams here on these dots. They also have another yellow or sort of orange yellow that lines up with the dot or a marker on the bottom of the um, crank trigger wheel. Uh, and then there's a, like a darker, a darker link which lines up with one of these on the crank trigger wheel as well. Now, when you're doing it in this situation, it's important to get a camera down there and actually make sure you have that lined up because parallax can be. Uh, a problem when you're looking from up here and you can't actually see from the right angle in front so that's an important thing but it's pretty simple they're pretty easy to time it's pretty hard to mess them up if, as long as you line up the, the right marks a photo the yellow links perfectly at the bottom and those two on yeah. the dots so it's got to be right now we got a tensioner so there's a little trick with the barrows is to actually have a little bit of pre-tension on the tensioner because uh, otherwise they rattle and they sound like crap. The problem with the tensioners is, is that the actual shaft needs to come out so far for it to actually lock into the next um, ratchet, like the next slot. Where the hell is the tensioner? Oh, that was in the year. So this actually has to come out so far for it to actually lock into the like the next slot. So the trick is to actually put some pre-tension on it and let it out before you bolt it up. All right, so I've done my best to clean up this front cover or the RTV just as best I can. We've got a new RT, uh, new front seal in there. So we'll uh, give it the appropriate amount of goop this time and put it back on so it's all sealed up. All right, it's so time now to clean up all these disgusting bolts. Ew. Alright, so with the front cover pretty much all back on, um, now we're going to move on to doing the injectors. So we supplied injectors for this one, we've chosen to go with some expert 1000cc injectors. So it'll be a very similar setup to the other car. Alright, we've got our new injectors installed, so now it's time to put our cover on. Uh, the customer luckily supplied a new cover seal, a gasket kit, which is good because the old one was absolutely covered in crap as you saw as everything else pretty much was on this thing. So it's good that we've at least got a new one of them, but apart from that, we're pretty much sorted. So whack this cover on, throttle body goes back on, intercooler piping, and then we're good to go. Rex is cleaning off all this crap and he's super stoked about it. Look at that. Just piled on. Oh, they glued the fucking... Rings in and everything. Yeah, whoever did this needs fucking. <laughs> Oh, the fucking even the rail bolts and shit. There's different sizes. Oh yeah, they've that's cut right. them and shortened them. And yeah, they've um obviously they've taken the rail off and lost bolts and screwed that up because uh, the rail had all different bolts in it. Um, like this this bolt here on the support for the rail is like rounded off. Someone's used the wrong size socket and actually wrecked the bolt head, and we couldn't actually get that in done. Um, so so much of this car, there's so many much stuff on it that's just <laughs> cooked. Anyway, as you've seen, we've done our best to make sure that um, it's leaving here much better than it got here. Uh, you know, as, as, as bad as it all is, once it's all back together, we've managed to get at least one of those snap bolts out of the cam cap, which means we're down to one snap bolt in the cover. Um, and you know, <laughs> it's sealed up reasonably now. It's gonna have a new gasket in the cover and stuff like that. So most of the grossness that we've come across is gonna be sorted out. Um, you know, unfortunately, things like that bolt head and stuff, there's just a few things we can't do much about. But, you know, if, if the owner really wants to, you can go through and do that. But it's uh, it's always just a matter of um, uh, that communication with the owner. That is something that we could fix if he wanted us to, but we got to get paid for our time. So most of the time, it's usually we'll let them know. Usually people will rather fix it themselves and not pay us to do it for things like that. But uh, all this stuff inside the engine, it's just gonna be a lot nicer. Another thing I should probably also add, which I don't think I've said in the video yet, was that the owner of this suit literally only just bought it. So a lot of this stuff is him, it's news to him as we tell him. So it's not just that he couldn't be bothered to fix it. I'm sure he's gonna fix it all when he gets it back. It's just that he literally only just bought it and uh, pretty much bought it straight here for 
you know, these little upgrades because he knows it's what the barras need. And um, yeah, I'm sure once he gets it back, he's gonna work at fixing all this stuff and this thing will be a very nice ute in no time. It is quite a nice ute, I like it. There you go guys, the ute's back together and running. It's much, much nicer than when it got here. It's back together in a much nicer way, which is what we strive to do. Obviously we always do what we can within reason and uh, within budget and cost and customer requests. So uh, it's much nicer now than it was when it got here. So it's ready to hit the dyno now, which will be this week. So we'll tune back in when we're ready to hit the dyno with them both. See what sort of results we can get. <laughs> 